Okay, so we've been fairly su successful so far working with our weak acid formula, which tells that the, the acid constant can be found by doing the amount of H3O that the acid produces squared divided by the concentration of the acid. And the denominator is the part we need to look at. For this, we've been using the original amount of the acid, and that's a little sketchy. It works fine in a lot of cases because weak acids do not dissociate very much. So if you start with like 0.3 moles per liter of your acid, technically you lose a little bit of that acid when it dissociates, but if the difference is like this, I, I'm making up these numbers, but if you start with 0.3 moles per liter and then a tiny little bit like this, dissociates. This is like you leave the house with $30,000 and then you buy something that costs 70 cents. Effectively you've still got $30,000. This is such a small amount that it hardly makes a dent in your total and so it's fairly safe to just say you know what 0.3 is still the amount that I have. That works for a lot of weak acids but it only works if the acid is quite weak so that only a small amount of it dissociates and if the amount that you start with is pretty large. In this question the amount we start with is not all that large. The amount of anthocyanin prior to equilibrium is a fairly low number and the amount that dissociates is actually pretty significant. In this case the cheat that we've been using is going to get us in trouble so we have to change things up. Here's what we should be doing. We have H3O over the equilibrium concentration of the acid. Now here's our reasoning. The amount of H3O is 8.5 times 10 to the minus 4. No change there. 8.5 times 10 to the minus 4. Remember to square it. The amount of acid that we have at equilibrium is the original amount which is 1.62 times 10 to the minus 3 minus, and this is the amount of acid that has dissociated, and it's a fair bit. It's 8.5 times 10 to the minus 4. That's the amount that we've lost. So this is like I left the house with a dollar 62 and then I spent 85 cents. That's a substantial chunk of my starting amount that's more than half of my money gone, or in this case it's more than half of my acid gone. We cannot afford to overlook that. This is not like the 0.3 minus 0 0.0007. This is a substantial chunk, and so we must acknowledge it. We must find the equilibrium amount of the acid, and if we do that we get 8.5 times 10 to the minus 4 squared over, if we subtract those, 1.62 times 10 to the minus 3, take away 8.5 times 10 to the minus 4, we're left with our equilibrium amount of acid would be 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 4. And if we divide that out, 8.5 times 10 to the minus 4 squared divided by 7.7 .7 times 10 to the minus 4. We find that our k is 9.4 times 10 to the minus 4. So, what is it about this problem that lets us know that we can't use the easy method anymore? It has to do with the concentration of the acid and the K. And the rule is you can use the easy method where the, cons the original concentration is the same as the er equilibrium concentration. You can use that whenever the concentration of the acid is 10,000 is a thousand times, sorry, a thousand times greater than the acid constant. The trouble with this one is we don't know the acid constant and frankly I ran this question, got to the end, I didn't real, I didn't 
really notice how low this concentration was. But when I got to the end and saw the K and how low it is, then I realized I didn't have this condition. I didn't have an amount of acid that was a thousand times bigger than this acid constant, and that's when I realized I had to reset and start this one again. So here I am warning you about it. Generally, acid constants are like 10 to the minus 11, things like that, very tiny, and the concentrations of our acids are like 0 0.2, 0 0.7, 0 0.35, that kind of thing. And so we meet this, this condition no problem. If you ever notice that your acid constant's a little high, this one kind of is, instead of 10 to the minus 10 or whatever, it's 10 to the minus 4, that's pretty good. Or that the acid concentration is a little low, like scientific notation low, that should set off a little alarm in your head and you should check whether this condition actually holds. If it had held, then we could just say that this amount was 1.62 times 10 to the minus 3 and we'd be able to rush through this. But if your acid's really weak, then you have to do this subtraction. Then you're thinking, I'm not starting off with very much acid. Losing some acid might actually make a substantial difference to this number, and in this case it really did, and that'll affect your K. So, really watery acid, use the difficult, use the detailed thing. Really high K, if you happen to know it, use the detailed thing. If neither of those is true, if it's a strong acid and a low K, then that means we can use the old method where we don't bother with the subtraction. That's a lot to remember, and it feels like a trap lurking that's just going to jump you when you're not paying attention. It, We don't bring it up all that often, but I did want you to know about it, because it can come up in practice problems, and if, you're, if you don't know where it's coming from, you'll just feel like you're magically getting problems wrong and you don't know why. This is why. You can only do the easy thing if you've got lots of acid with a low K. Let's see if that comes up again. Original concentration of a solution of methanoic acid. Okay, they're changing up the problems now. Up to this point we've been calculating Ks, now we are not. Now, we're going to know the K and we're going to find other stuff. So our formula says that the acid constant is H3O squared over the concentration of the acid. So how much of this do we actually know? Well, it's methanoic acid, which is in your data book. If you go to your acid base table, which uh, in my book is on pages 8 and 9, and you find methanoic acid, also known as formic acid, you should find that it's acid constant a is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4, give or take. If you're using a different data book for me, you might get a slightly different number, but it should be pretty close to this. That's the K. We also have the H3O. They didn't exactly give it to us, but they pretty much did by telling us the pH. The H3O is 10 to the minus 3.26 which I do not know, but my calculator can find it for me. 5 point... We're going to get two significant digits here. Our uh, acid constant has two significant digits, and so does this pH, so I'll just carry three in my calculations. 5.50 times 10 to the minus... 1, 2, 3, 4 moles per liter. Okay, that's our H3O. We have Ka, we have H3O. We should be able to run this down. We should be able to find our acid concentration. If we multiply both sides by acid concentration, we get acid concentration times Ka equals H3O squared. And then we divide both sides by Ka, and we get Acid concentration should be H3O squared over the Ka. Well, we have all that. H3O is 5.5 .5 times 10 to the minus 4. Remember to square it. Divided by our acid constant is 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. 
and so the concentration of our acid should be 1.7 times 10 to the minus 1, 2, 3. That's a concentration, so it's in moles per liter. I'll just sit here for a minute and let you look at those. Any alarm bells going off? Check out these numbers. We're saying that the acid concentration is 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3. What's our K? 1.8 times 10 to the minus 4. Pretty high acid constant. Pretty low concentration. Uh-oh. It happened again. <laughs> the, uh, the amount of this acid that we started with is fairly low, which means we probably lost a fair chunk of it when we were doing our dissociation, which means this is probably not our initial amount of acid. We ended up with 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3 moles per liter. That could be our equilibrium concentration, but we had more when we started. We had this much more. If we produced this much hydrogen, every single one of these came from an acid that we lost. And so the original amount of acid would be 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3. This is the acid we still have, plus 5.5 times 10 to the minus 4. These are acids that we started with, and we still have them. They're still in the solution. These are acids we started with, but they gave their lives to release hydrogen. The total of those two is actually what we get for our original concentration. 1.7 times 10 to the minus 3 plus 5.5 times 10 to the minus 4. And from that I get 2.25 times 10 to the minus 3 should be our original concentration of this acid. If I rounded right, um, I feel like I should run this again because I might have, I hope I didn't round any of these numbers too high or too low. If this is two significant digits, it should become 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3. That's right on the line. I hope it isn't 2.2. The, the idea I want you to come away with is because this was a high K acid with a low concentration, we lost a substantial amount of it. And the amount you have at equilibrium, you can't just look at this and say, okay, I must have started with this amount. No, you started with more than this, and you lost a substantial amount, and it brought you down to 1.7. So we have to account for that. The 2.3 times 10 to the minus 3 should be more like it for that one. Okay. What do we have for this? Sodium hydrogen sulfite. There's sodium hydrogen sulfite. It dissociates into sodium, who cares, and hydrogen sulfite, which is a very weak acid. The pH is 2.51, so we can say the K for this is... H3O squared over the original, or sorry, the equilibrium concentration of the acid. HSO3. So, hydrogen sulfite is in the data book. Be careful, there's hydrogen sulfate. That's not what we want. Hydrogen sulfite is on the second page. It's one of the weaker acids. Its K is 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8. 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8. That's a fairly low K, so hopefully we don't get ganked by this problem here where we have to readjust our concentrations. That's our K. And what else have they given us? They've given us H3O indirectly because they told us the pH is 2.51. That means the H3O concentration is 10 to the minus 2.51 which is 3.09 times 10 to the 
minus 3. So we know the k. We can multiply both sides by HSO3, divide by k, and we get this. I'll call it Ka, that's a little more precise. Okay, so H3O, we have it. They didn't exactly give it to us, but we found it because we are awesome. Remember to square it. The K, according to the data book, is 6.3 times 10 to the minus 8. And from that we get 3.09 times 10 to the minus 3 squared divided by 6.3e minus 8. Really? Holy smokes. Okay, I just got 151 moles per liter, which would be like syrup-like concentration. It would be, that's outrageously high. But, uh... I don't see anything wrong with the calculation, so I guess that's it. The calculator is actually giving me like 151.58 moles per liter. And if our answer is only allowed to have two significant digits, then we'd take that down to 1.5 times 10 to the 2 moles per liter. You would need like pressure to get that much chemical into a liter, but... Uh, that's what we're getting from our calculation, so that's what we get. Notice we didn't have to do any adjusting this time because first, our K is fairly low, so not much of this acid dissociates, and second, the amount of ori the original amount of acid is incredibly high. So does this amount of lost acid make any difference to this? That's like if you start with 150 bucks and then you spend 0 0.3 of a cent, have you really made a chunk in the money that you're carrying? No, you're not. You can't even see the difference in here, so we do not have to make any adjustments for this acid because it's highly concentrated and its K is not very high. So it's not going to bite us the way that 47 and 48 did.